Warning, the following broadcast may contain pervasive language of a graphic or vulgar nature. It is intended for mature audiences only. Listener discretion is advised. And may fictional Jesus have mercy on your souls. Enjoy the show. Rise quick and we fade much faster. The patience and hand of the same old bastard says, Don't put all your dreams in Go ahead, my friend. Yeah, ask him what's we'll happening. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Intellectual Saviors. If you are United States citizens, do you think that you have the right to a free trial? You guys can answer. Mm. Well, I mean, a free trial is you don't have to pay for it. I was gonna say is right to fair it, trial. Is that we're talking? <laughs> it's free. Um, well, according to what is it, the Fifth Amendment? Is that no, that's due when process you, you law? Don't have to, that's when you don't have to incriminate yourself. You don't have to say anything. Is it fifth or fourth? Yourself. Which one's due process? I don't know, but according it's to the just co- a yes or no answer. <laughs> according to the Constitution, Why are you guys yes. Being uh, wrong. Apparently, if you are deemed a terrorist or a threat to the United States, regardless of your citizenship, you can be drone striked. Yeah. It's happened to multiple United States citizens overseas. As I say, because they were overseas. terrorists, quote unquote. Think about that next time. And also, if you don't think that that is uh, enough due process going on by our government. Have you guys heard about this uh, Christopher Dorner gentleman from Los Angeles? He's an old police officer. Yeah. They no. still haven't caught him yet. Yeah. Um, they are searching trucks all up and down uh, the highway with uh, no warrants or any kind of uh, suspicion. They're just pulling him over and searching him at gunpoint. I don't know if you heard this, but... Um, huh. They started looking for him, you know, last week, and I guess he was driving around like an old Nissan truck, and the cops are so on edge and stuff. Um, some of them were searching the neighborhood that he was supposedly, you know, maybe lurking in, and um, there was two women driving a gray Nissan similar to his description, but and they had their lights out, and they were delivering papers, but the cops saw this truck slowly driving around, and they started shooting at it, and they wounded the two women in it. Like, they didn't stop her, and they just fucking opened fire on it. Yeah. That that those are all your rights that you have, people. L A P D L A P D. That's government, government, <laughs> drone striking their own people, and then letting the cops run wild yeah. over a guy that went on a shooting spree. It's about time for another riot in L A, huh? Somebody will get a lawsuit. Oh, dude, I'd sue the fuck out of them. It's absolutely ridiculous. Those ladies particularly will probably get a lawsuit. I apologize for that downer of an opening, but I think yeah, I'm going to give that a two because you had to have an incorporation of Michael and I answering a question too. Sorry. <laughs> and then he got mad when we were trying to answer it. With <laughs> you guys were purposely <laughs> prolonging it, all right, you assholes. You left it open. Don't give me that shit. Hey, all right, that's the last. Should have been rhetorical. I can remember the fourth or fifth amendment. All right, fuck you guys. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um. So free for. Well, first off, I just want to say I'm Michael Boggs. And then oh, there's Michael yeah. Bentz you're not and the gonna, Ginger you're not Bear, Eric Jones. Song? No, not today. <laughs> and <laughs> Enough songs that we got yeah, going. we're good. Um, <laughs> like the extreme song that we're going to hear later? We're not oh, going to do that yes song. Yes, we I'm are. I'm telling you now. <laughs> be prepared, kids. <laughs> the very end of the show, you're going to be in for a major treat. <laughs> By treat, he means travesty. No. No, I don't. hilarious, though. I'm in treat. And I just thought I would introduce ourselves. And Michael, you want to go ahead and whore us out? Yeah, I was going to say, since I didn't do it last week, uh, <laughs> make sure everybody to uh, follow us on the Twitter, at the Intel Saviors, uh, and definitely follow Eric, because uh, the girls love him, at the at E Ginger Bear, so don't forget that, and Boggs, don't you have a Twitter My Twitter thing? is like bare as fuck, I don't have shit going on on my Twitter. <laughs> I, just, I, like, I tried to do Twitter trying to get him back like, no, into just it, fuck so. is this bullshit, and then I gave up. No, just tell us, what's the Twitter again? At Boggsy Baby. <laughs> 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 Woo! Yeah. All right, B O G G S. But anyway, B A B Y. There you go. Be sure to do that. And then I, I get most people should know if you guys are listening to this. Check us out on podbean.com and iTunes, and also go to Facebook. Just you know, same thing. Intellectual savings and search. You find us, like us, comments, all that kind of fun stuff. Speaking, Speaking of, of comments, <laughs> <laughs> segue. <laughs> so earlier this week, I uh, 
posted up a fun little thing about uh, shit and religion. And um, yeah, I covered all the bases. I went over uh, Taoism, Hinduism, uh, Catholicism, Judaism, Muslims. Uh, I, I, I hit it all. And uh, I thought it was funny. I thought it was good. Uh, just to give you some tidbits onto what, hey, I think we got another like on that one. Yep. Somebody else liked that status. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, Thank you for the live update. Right. On the recorded <laughs> tape. Uh, some of my favorites are uh, Hinduism, this shit happened before. <laughs> Islam, if shit happens, takes a, take a hostage. Uh, uh, Buddhism, when it's shit, when shit happens, is it really shit? Uh, and then my all-time personal favorite, Catholicism. If shit happens, I deserve it. <laughs> yep. And then at the bottom, I have atheist, no shit, and then Rastafarianism, let's smoke this shit. And that's racist, I think. Uh, yeah, we got like a whole bunch of likes on it, and then this uh, one guy decided that uh, he didn't like it at all. He said, this is just racist and wrong, we'll gladly unlike you. Um, <laughs> wow, okay, this guy's added some more stuff. Uh Let's live see. updates again? Yep, yeah, live updates. Uh, I said, comment on live Islam on and terrorism, just beyond the pale. Not funny at all. And then he said, not even Hitchens. Uh, was, was this Swallow or Juvenile? What? That doesn't make sense. We are pretty juvenile. I have to give him that. <clears throat> However, anybody that would put a comment like that definitely hasn't listened to the show, because if that offended him, then he wouldn't have made it past probably about the first 10 minutes of any episode that he listened to <laughs> without telling us to I, get I'm, fuck I'm sorry, but... yeah. Islam is not a nice religion. Just read the fucking book. Like it, they purposely go out of their way to try and like <laughs> Muhammad. He was an evil fucker. <laughs> However, <laughs> it was to... sick and twisted. Do not let any Muslim tell you otherwise, because they are full of shit. If you actually read the Quran, which I have, you will find out that it is an evil, evil book. Do not defend Muslims for one fucking second. But to steal a line from Boggs and say, to be fair, um, Christianity isn't really the most happy, fun time. Oh, I agree with either, that. Absolutely. So. And we've think, gone over that dozens think, of times. Yeah, I think Eric the said difference it. is, is that uh, there's there are some Christians that do go overboard and do go crazy. Oh, but that's true. At, by percentage, they're very small by comparison to Muslims. There are a shitload more Muslims that are radical and militant versus Christians. Mm hmm. So Christians, they believe in all the good stuff. A lot of them just try and exhale all the bad stuff and forget about it. Muslims, however, keep all of the good and the bad and then try and put on this face of, oh, we're a peaceful religion. No, you're not. You're fucking suicide bombing people. You're crashing fucking planes into buildings. You're, I'm not saying that it's not completely unjustified because they definitely have been shit on. But that does not mean that you can go into a crowded place with a whole bunch of little kids, yell Allah, and blow your fucking brains out. Like, no, it's not how it goes. See, I sympathize with, like, Palestinians particularly since, you know, post-World War II, we were basically just like, hey, you know what, we're just going to take your land from you and give it to the Jews. So, you know, I, I sympathize with that. But I will say, again, that, you know, I, I really want to hold a policy where you don't meet violence with violence. It's really shitty, but... And I know this is a trite example to say too, so I'm sure I'm gonna get Michael aroused here. But it's kind of like I'm you know, aroused. it's kind of like adhering to uh, the Jedi code, where they always take prisoners. <laughs> they don't kill people unless it's absolutely necessary. There's always like a nonviolent solution they try to reach first. That's like the ultimate good thing you can do. That's why I don't like the death penalty laws here. I don't feel that the state should be condemning people to death like that, not because people don't deserve it or because people want it, but because the state itself should adhere to things that are morally correct. And killing just isn't one of them. See, I don't have a problem with it in some circumstances. However, since this is a Christian nation and God says thou shalt not kill, I kind of have to tend to believe that we shouldn't be doing that just because that's not what God would want. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's my stance on it. But personally, fuck them. I mean, you kill a bunch of kids or something like that, yeah, you should get the death penalty. Yeah, I, just, I don't think so. But I'm not a Christian, so I don't believe in that. Thou <laughs> shalt not kill shit, so whatevs. I'm just saying that it's an... It's an inherently good thing to do to not kill people. No, I, no, I mean, I'm with you. Under, and, under any circumstance. And what yeah. you said about like the whole Palestinian thing, I don't really want to include them in with like with, like Eric and Seth's talking about with these jihadists. The Palestinians, you got to think, I and mean, Israel is, you know, we give them a billion dollars of aid every year. They have like the second largest military. 
you know, the free countries next to yep. us. I mean, you know, outside, you know, of us in China. Um, Palestinians don't have anything. I mean, the suicide bombing thing, it's like that's the only way that they have to defend themselves. I mean, it's it's bullshit. Don't get me wrong. But it's like, what are you going to do? You got tanks and an air force and all this shit on the other side. You've got rocks and sticks. I mean, you don't I mean, they have to do what they have to do. I mean, they've been suppressed for so long. So I don't know. But then I give it's a little different story with them. Yeah, I guess kind of the whole point to why I get riled up over this kind of stuff is because a lot of this shit wouldn't happen if those religions were not around. Nope. Correct. So I can't really sit back and say that I'm going to respect somebody's religion and just leave it at that. I'm not going to do that. I'm not that kind of atheist. I'm not the one that's going to be like, oh, well, people can believe what they want to believe, and that's just fine. No, fuck it. If it's harming somebody else, it is my fucking business. I'm a human just like they are. They have every right to be here just as much as I do. If it can happen to them, it can happen to me. That is the point. I'm defending the race, not a fucking religion. Fuck off. Mm. Which, but I, I'm, I mean, I'm glad that he's speaking his voice. That's fine. Go ahead. Speak your voice. But don't expect a rebuttal from me because uh, it's not going to happen if you're coming at me at, with... This whole, oh, let's respect religion. It's racist. No, it's not. It has nothing to do with your race. It has everything to do with the culture that they were raised in. Just so happens that the majority of Muslims happen to be from the Middle East. It happens to be the majority of Christians are white. That doesn't mean I'm stomping on a race. It just means I'm stomping on their culture. <laughs> so, yeah, get it right, dude. If you're going to call us out on something, it's not racism. It's creedism. Yes, that, that is for sure. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Definitely. <clears throat> but, you know, that's the thing about uh, that particular idea is, uh, you know, especially I just I, don't, I can't understand a Christian that says they're ra they're not raised. They're really. Damn it. He's got me saying it now <laughs> that their religion is nonviolent, given that you could just be like, hold up your hands and be like crusades, Spanish Inquisition, abortion clinic bombings, Irish Civil War. <laughs> like, how how long does this laundry list get? Yeah. Children crusades. I don't know, man. How long does it get? <laughs> hey, dude, did you want to wow. did you want to talk about the event that happened this week? Oh, on the note of religion, and um, this one's a little bit more pointed at the fact that Christians feel that their religion is under attack by homosexuals. Mm. Oh no, <clears throat> the I had, gays! Uh, the gays are coming. I had a friend this week who uh, she's gay, and she got the shit kicked out of her by a biker because she was gay. The circumstance was, I think she was hitting on one of his friends or something. She was hitting on a girl. And he decided that in response to that, he would break her teeth and beat the fuck out of her. And that's what happened. He beat the fuck out of her and he broke her teeth. There's pictures on Facebook right now of her teeth. And they're pretty fucked up. Like, that's going to take... I, I'm sure she's even in the right ballpark because she she had posted that it was like, here's another $4,500 I have to spend getting my teeth fixed. And yeah. it was about, it's what it looked like. It looked like it would be about that much. So... I made a post that said, essentially, hey, you're not getting attacked. <laughs> hey, yeah. if you're Christian, hey, Christian, you're really you're not, not getting attacked. Yeah. This person is getting attacked. You know, and any time that somebody says, y'all are attacking marriage, y'all are attacking Christianity, no. look at her face and tell me who's getting attacked this time. And people thought that I made a big religious thing out of uh, her getting attacked by a biker. Because the biker doesn't have to be Christian, so that's unrelated, right? <laughs> no, you still feel like you're being attacked, and I'm telling you you're not being attacked. It's irrelevant if he's Muslim, Christian, atheist. Doesn't matter what the biker is. The fact is, you are not being attacked. Yeah, it's that way. I think of, you're safe. It's that way of life, you know. And that's where politics come to play because you have your political leaders out there, you know, constantly derailing, like you know, homosexuals being married as an affront to all people getting married. How it's a war on, you know, the the traditional marriages and stuff. And it's like that. Not only that, or like you know, now with the Cub Scouts, you know, having like gay children and the Cub Scouts are they they fight everything and they turn into this civil war like it's the worst thing ever like if you put the gays in here if you allow the gays in it's just it's going to be mass anarchy and it's going to just devalue everybody you know their traditional marriages and their lifestyles and it's ruining America and this good Christian America that we have and I think that's what it is people these really frustrated right wingers mostly white men and stuff we know how that is I mean they do they look at it like that like you know, whether it's women's rights or minorities or gays, they look at it as an affront upon, you know, their lifestyle and they just can't fucking handle it. You know, it's I, I don't know. 
I have a problem with the state. idea because I know a lot of people say, you know, call it something different. I think that somebody has said that before. Where it's like, just call it a civil union and get it over with or something. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> but <laughs> because and, That's not the point. Yeah. Well, I mean, s- to some people it is, and to mm-hmm. a lot of the churches it is because they feel that marriage is an inherently Christian thing. But yes. But if you're going to say that— Which it's not. If you're, you know, I was about to say, if you're going to say that, that means that every Hinduist that's ever been married shouldn't be because you're not exactly. adhering to that. Every Buddhist shouldn't be. Every atheist, I like my marriage would be dissolved at that point. I'm agnostic. I don't believe in the Christian religion. So yeah. if you're going to say that it's a strictly Christian thing, then no one else could be married. But you already make exceptions for all of us because I am married legally. You know, I have that privilege. I, I That's how I'm taxed. So, I mean, when will you learn, if you're a Christian, that marriage is not for you? solely it's not just yours yeah and if that's true and we call it a civil union is that all it's going to take i mean is that seriously it that's you just want us to label it something different and then you're cool with it because that to me seems like you're just being a little bit of a pussy petty so and too. very petty but you know other than the fact that because a lot of the things when, when i was younger too i would look at money a lot and i'd be like well fuck let them get married so they can get taxed the same because it's bullshit that they're living in the same household anyway and we're taxing them as two single people and they pay more on taxes. That's bullshit. There's a lot of things like that that come that come up. But, I mean, what else is this? And this is the thing that I was saying on my uh, Facebook when your, bu- your buddy Brian and I were having a little debate. But I was like, you know, um, why is it such an, inherent, an inherently wrong thing to be gay? And their whole thing was, and I'm really confused on this one too, because they defended peaceful type actions and behavior, and then they still came out and were discriminatory. So, But I was saying, by definition, you're discriminating against people, right? And no one really answered me. No one said, no, we're not discriminating. No one said, yes, we are, even though they are, because by definition, you're treating someone different based on some observation you've had. The other thing, though, is I started pulling up Bible verses, and one of them that I found was in Leviticus. If you want to go read it, it's chapter 22. I can't remember the verse. But it says... Uh, a man shall not lay with another man as he would a woman. That is detestable. He should be put to death. Their, or I think it says they should be put to death. Their blood will be on their heads. So I was like, please tell me why you don't try to kill them and why this biker is you know, not doing something good for you, basically. Yeah. And their response back was, no, 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 man. That's the Torah. That's the Jewish Bible. That, we, the, Jesus erased that. He, he got rid of the law. Okay, well, let me tell you something about that real quick. If that were true, why the fuck are you holding to a Bible? Because you seem to be really, really, really adherent to the New Testament now. Aren't you, how, how are you any different from a Jewish Pharisee? That's my first point. The second one, um, if you are saying, no, 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 Jesus changed the whole Old Testament and it's different now, why is it part of the Bible? If I can't quote that and try to use lessons out of that, why is it in there? And the, and the answer that I came to was the same one that Eric has said on this show a fucking million times. You pick and choose verses that are convenient for your argument. And it's awesome that you can do that. However, I have to use this thing called evidence and research. So. What? What's that? <laughs> I'll get it's fucking it. just incredible. I, I, I feel so overwhelmed. This is one of the reasons why I wanted to d- delete Facebook because I'm so fucking tired. Like, how do you how do you respond to that? How do you respond to somebody that they'll they'll use they'll pick and choose whatever they can say? It's like that, I told you. Sometimes you just have to let it go because yep. that's some, what I did. As soon as I saw that, people out there that you just cannot argue with. Because as soon as I saw stupid. As soon as I saw him say that, and he here's the deal though, and this is why this is the part that I was just like, I fucking give up. I can't take this anymore. He said the next part to this is sin is equal in God's eyes. Therefore, homosexuality, same as murder. Uh, so stealing, <laughs> same as murder. Stealing, yep, that's a sin. Uh, what about thinking about another man's wife? Murder? I believe that would also consist of murder. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, uh, okay, what about so disobeying your parents? Murder. I think so. Yeah, you're, it's sin is equal, man. Uh, what it's about eating equal. shellfish? Um, oh, that's Old Testament. It doesn't count. <laughs> Michael's right. <laughs> Michael's right on this one, and you're wrong. I think if you're wrong ever, if you yeah, like misinform it, someone, bitch. I think you sin as well. So murder. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fucking, we're gonna stone you after this. Damn it. But as soon as I saw that, I was like, okay. So here's what our comparison is, and this is one of the things that I was talking to Eric about earlier in the week because I, 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 I don't know if I should cry or laugh at this point. <laughs> I really don't. But you know, here's the thing you should really think about, and this is to listeners: just drop religion. 
drop social life, drop everything that we've ever thought about sex. We're just talking about sex right now, okay? A man and a woman have sex. Mm. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> Think you about know this. Michael's thinking about it. Right. Oh, Think yeah. about this. What morality is attached to that action? None when I'm doing it. There's nothing more about what I'm up to. Mike, give me a second to get this point. This <laughs> is important. <laughs> Grow up, and I don't mean your little one. Anyway, so... Eh. Think about that, though. If you're just having sex, there's no morals attached to that. You're not being morally good, but you're not being morally bad. There's nothing wrong. Now, I'm assuming it's consensual because, obviously, if you're doing something that someone doesn't want you to do, you're imposing. Yeah. But this is the point. Homosexuals having sex, that's not a moral action. It's two people having sex. That's it. That's yeah. all there is. You know, the only time that there's a moral issue that's attached to sex is if you lie about it, right? You're cheating. If you have a uh, sexually transmitted disease and you just don't tell them, Ergo, you're lying, right? Yeah. Anytime that you have morals attached to that, you're just a fucking asshole. That's it. The actual act. Yeah, you're forcing it upon somebody. Yeah. Rape, obviously, That's is. Where morality comes into play. Murder. Let's look at murder. Inherently impositional. You're killing someone. They, odds are they don't want you to kill them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just. Unless you're that fucking little midget guy from Borderlands. I can't remember his damn name. Sir. Damn it. I can't remember his name. Anyway, you light that motherfucker on fire because he wants it. But. I mean, that's the point. Murder is inherently impositional. They are different acts. Yeah. They are not the same. That's the same with stealing. If you're stealing because your family is fucking starving and you need to get them a goddamn bread loaf. <laughs> could, that, could that possibly show that maybe their God is, uh, what's the best word for it, irrational? Yes. This is the point hmm. I was going to make here. The point here is that means, that means that if God is real... He is a fucking four-year-old, and he doesn't understand the very <laughs> definition of the word morality. That's incorrect, sir. He's uh, at least 6,000 years old. You know, <laughs> that's fact. Whatever. But that's, you know, it's not, it's, sex is not a moral thing. There's no morals attached to it. That's just the bottom line yeah. to it. How the fuck is this a sin? How the fuck is, there's even, god damn it, there's even physical evidence now where your brain regions are smaller in your hypothalamus, which is a hormone, pro, uh, not a producer, but a hormone-controlling brain region. Yeah. They're smaller in gay men. Imagine that. So you're telling me that God just decided you have a smaller hypothalamus in your brain, you're going to be gay, and I'm going to throw you in hell for it? <laughs> That's a loving God. Yeah. That's a real loving man right there. Uh, I think a lot of Christians, like, they, they talk about how it's a, it's a big deal, and, you know, the, the, I don't understand these gay people making such a big deal out of it. You know, it's it's our thing, and whatever, and it's... I don't understand why this gay person's making a big deal out of it. I mean, they only got their teeth knocked out, and they're bloody as fuck all over the Facebook. Well, it also goes... <laughs> I mean, I don't have any violence towards me, th thankfully, but, um, I mean, it goes in line with why I'm so outspoken and why I'm so frank with uh, my non-belief is because they wear it out. If... if these religious people just kept it in, didn't say shit, didn't try to influence little kids, didn't try to influence government, didn't try to influence science, didn't try to influence everybody, and just kept it to themselves. I wouldn't care, and I wouldn't say anything to anybody about anything. I wouldn't give a shit. But the fact that they're always so outward about it, and mm -hmm. they always had their little fucking crosses on their necks, and they always have fucking Jesus fishes on there... And they always try and uh, brainwash little kids, and they're always trying to interject this pseudoscience and call it real science and go into politics and change laws so that women can't have abortions legally mm. and then go into back alley abortions and get two people killed instead of just one. Um, that's why I'm so outspoken. I'm gonna that's go ahead why and I put everything to the forefront, and I, that's why I push it so hard. Just on that note real quick um, – I just want to bring this up since we're talking about Christians sticking their nose and shit that doesn't belong. I just wanted to uh, say hi to Kristen, who's in her doing her missionary work in Africa right now. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> hi. I think we're gonna get. She told us that we were gonna get postcards. Yeah. So. She's gonna start sending us some postcards and stuff. She didn't get around to it this week, but I don't know. Hopefully, we'll hear from her soon. I'm kind of worried about her. Yeah, this ain't gonna be a bear attack, man. It's gonna be like a lion pack oh, or a hyena yeah. pack or like the black mamba snake. Or a giraffe. Or... I told her to watch out. A giraffe, really? Better dude? watch That's... out for those motherfuckers. Have you seen how long their tongues are? That can do some damage. Oh yeah, only some major fucking damage. I was not at all thinking about damage when you said they had a long tongue. <laughs> okay, what about a hippo then? <laughs> That will be. That's an aggressive Hippos animal. Hippos are the most that dangerous is a animal in Africa. Aggressive animal. <laughs> I would steer the Kristen if you're listening to this. Stay away from the goddamn hippos. <laughs> stay away from the hippos. Stay away. So 
Unfortunately, we're running producerless. Well, I should say Boggs is kind of... I'm running the boards, running bitches. Running the board, so... Unfortunately, that's the way it's going to be. No pops so far. Yeah. <laughs> 25 minutes in, no All pops. All right, does anybody have any uh, any uh anything uh more uplifting? <laughs> I feel like we've been kind of a downer since nothing, the beginning. Nothing uplifting. <laughs> well, let's see. This is the Valentine's Day show. I guess that's why all so the So happy Valentine's are. Day. That's why we're doing a bunch. We're going to do a... We're going to basically just... Just rape a lot of songs. Well, here in a little bit, at least at least two or three. Yeah. One of them might be pretty solid. Yeah. So uh, I mean, you know, I guess we should probably mention that. Um, thank you for the listeners, because if you weren't there, we would just be producing the show for nobody. And I mean, we'd still produce the show. Yeah, I was about to say we'd probably do that anyway. You <laughs> know, a lot of people say a lot of people say the same thing. Like, if you weren't here, we wouldn't be here. It's like, no, I'd still produce the show. Well, we do it for free, so yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I like the fact that they listen and everything, but I, I don't really think that it. it but we love it. You. Wouldn't change how I, uh, or that I do the show. Yeah, I guess. Anyway, the point is, on an uplifting note, thank you for listening. You've been badass. Yes. And. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> that's that's actually about it on this. One. Okay, then. So I guess we'll yeah. finish this son of a bitch off and then hit the topic. So, sir. The music, please. This is the Dick of the Week! <laughs> okay, kids. Now, this week... Actually, this is a great one because since we just went over all the homosexual and Christianity talk and stuff, we had the perfect one. I found this guy whom... He, he probably could win. He, he's a good candidate for Dick of the Year already as well, I think. Tennessee Senator Stacy Campfield. This is a man who last year introduced a bill in the uh, Tennessee Senate that was called the Don't Say Gay Bill, which uh, basically would prohibit uh, the mention of homosexuality or basically anything to do with sexuality in uh, classrooms for students from K to 8th grade. Okay, which, you know, I can understand a little bit of that, but making it you know, the, I just the fact that it's called the Don't Say Gay Bill, you know, and it's specifically geared toward not talking about homosexuality around the kids. Uh, but, of course, I got shot down. So then recently, just in the past couple of weeks, he's went on a fucking furious um, tirade of uh, bill propositions, and he reintroduced the bill. Only this year he's calling it the Classroom Protection Act. It's the same as last year's, only he added the caveat where if teachers or guidance counselors have – you know, when they're having their discussions with children or something, and the children let on to the fact that they have had maybe some homosexual thoughts or maybe an incident happened with them and somebody else, that they're supposed to alert their parents to what's going on. It's mandatory that they have to do this. Um, to, you know, or any children, like I said, if they're identifying themselves as potentially um, homosexual then they have to let the folks know. So I think that's a little bit bullshit. I mean, it kind of takes away from the fact where the kids are supposed to be able to go to the counselors and discuss issues with them to begin with. And secret, you know, this is a prime. breach in confidentiality. Exactly. That's the problem. If you're talking to a school counselor like that and you're like, I think I might be gay, but I don't want anybody to know, and then they're required by law to tell your parents. Mm -hmm. that's, and, and that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to force it where it is. Yeah. And, I don't like the fact. This is this is against your, your confidentiality. Exactly. And, uh, and that, you know, that's... Any bill like this, it doesn't even have to be the sexuality thing, but any time that it's supposed to be a confidential conversation, just fucking leave it alone. Well, he was asked about it, and this is what he said. He said, the act of homosexuality is very dangerous to someone's health and safety. And so he's looking out for the kid's health and safety. <laughs> That's why he wants the counselors to let the parents know. Also, so that automatically puts him right at the top of my list when I was looking at candidates. And then he also, in the last... Two weeks, he's proposed uh, teachers to be armed in schools, which, I mean, that's every fucking Republican out there, but he put that one forward in the Tennessee Senate. And also, he put a, a bill forward, I didn't get a name for this, but I'm sure it's not as awesome as Don't Say Gay, but uh, he put a bill forward where if parents uh, or if people are on welfare and their children are attending school and they start failing in school, or if they fail classes, then they will have their welfare benefits cut off. So then you're putting the pressure now on these kids where if something happens and they don't perform academically in a certain manner, then their parents lose their welfare funding. What the fuck? Okay, so I'm going to bring this up, and this is something everyone who is out there should really, really, really go and listen to. Go listen to the interview that Kristen did of her cousin mm -hmm. talking about all the social welfare and, and things like that because you know most people, 
And, I, you know, I was guilty of this in high school, too, and I still think that a lot of kids are like this. But a lot of people, when they feel like you're failing, it's because you're not trying hard enough. It's mm-hmm. because your work ethic is terrible. But I'm telling you now, there are people out there that cannot pass those classes, that need extra help, that need the – and – this right here is kind of a slap in the face. Yeah. <laughs> like, that interview is on uh, working socially, by the way. Yes. Yep. Episode. Um, but, you know, she goes over a lot of that. We actually have follow-up questions, too. I can post to the Facebook site eventually, which I probably won't do, but I could. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yes. But I remember her saying that, too. She said that, you know, the the common thing here is that most most students are treated like you're just not working hard enough and they're trying to work on your work ethic. But some of them just aren't there yet for whatever reason. It could be that they had – you know, a terrible time first and second grade because daddy left and they don't know why daddy mm-hmm. left. Or, I mean, not even that he left, but mommy and daddy are going to go inside for a second and you stay out here and you just hear screaming and fights and stuff breaking. You know, th- there's a lot of reasons why kids don't develop properly. And I know a lot of people will be like, oh, well, they don't need it anyway. And we went over the numbers. I mean, the amount that people actually get on welfare is very minimal. I know people think, oh, you got welfare queens, that whole bullshit, like we went over the stereotype. For instance, a single mother with two kids in Tennessee gets 185 a month capped. So it's not like they're rolling in the dough. So, I mean, you, know, you get less than $200. Yeah. 185 is the max for a single mother with two kids in Tennessee. For a welfare. single mother with two kids. Yes. Two kids. That's the max. Yeah. That's nowhere so, near enough. <laughs> I, yeah. I mean, that. yeah, that's nothing. And then they're trying to take that away from them. So, a so bunch of cocks. Yep. Stacy Campfield, dick of the week. <laughs> fuck him and that's how he feels about it yeah he can go to hell okay so i think uh we're gonna do a, a little jingle here and then we're gonna go into uh go into uh valentine's day are you prepared sir? the origin uh are yeah you, i'm prepared are your dusky dulcet totes ready to form something? This is, uh, what the fuck does that mean <laughs> dulcet tones i don't know i've dulcet heard people tones. i've heard people say that before this is a song called dusky uh, dulcet tones. the canopy it was written by a uh, Casey Crescenzo, who is the uh, headliner of The Deer Hunter. Yeah, and uh, by the way, Casey, if you ever listen to the show, <coughs> we're still kind of like wanting to use your stuff <laughs> for the podcast. Oops. So Yeah, send him a message and you just didn't respond. Fuck that. We just need, you. We need an interview. So what you, we're going to do is we're going to... Uh, he probably gonna, heard it and said no. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and play this here, The Canopy from The Deer Hunter. And they own the song, and we love them for not letting us use all of their music, but we're going to do it anyway. But anyway, <laughs> the uh, <laughs> this is considered a parody, so fuck it. But yeah, they're really great if you want to check them out. It's one of my favorite bands for sure. And this is off of The Color Spectrum, which is one of their... Let's see, it was their third album? Um, uh, no, no, it was their fourth, fourth album. It was their fourth album. Well, if you consider the color spectrum, because the it's color EPs. spectrum was like nine fucking albums, but whatever. Just play the fucking um, song. Well, hold on. We're, we're giving and some background. They are Shit. also about to go on tour, and they have a new album coming out in April. Hey, uh, I think we're gonna go to their show. By the way, and yes. when we do, I think we should badger the fuck out of them all night about letting us <laughs> use this music on the podcast. Have like little signs. You should have said yes to the intellectual <laughs> saviors. We'll just be like walking up, hey man, can I get a picture and also use your music on my podcast? <laughs> Remember I sent you that message like about a year ago? <laughs> anyway, here's the canopy. Hey Eric, what's the first line again? Oh my God, I was spinning <laughs> through the air. Okay. Just make it sure. I was spinning through the air when I found my body. Shit. <laughs> what is it? Spinning through the air when I thought when my I life thought was. thought that I was dying. When I thought my life was ending. I always confuse that. I just want to say you that this is really lyrics. good practice. Well, I was spinning through the air when I found my. God damn it, I did it again. I was spinning through the air when I thought my life was ending. But I was really on the ground And you were lying right there next to me I looked right into your eyes And I found myself pretending That we were high above the canopy But tethered to the trunk of a tree
Sorry, Casey, for all that bullshit just now. Slow down, take time and see the forest for the leaves. Well, I know that I should practice what I preach. Well, I was falling to the my body breaking But I had fallen in your lap With my head tilted back So I could see the sun eclipsed by your hair And it left a halo hanging Waiting above So when you go You don't have to wait to get your wings Say now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 you got to listen to fired. that show. I was going to say, you know, oh, oh, practice oh. beforehand was really good, and then Boggs had to fuck it up and go get a sandwich, and then he hey, lost his mojo. I, I, I think we pulled it off pretty damn good. Nope, he did. It I just took like he... four times to start, but yeah, we did pretty good. <laughs> yeah, once, once it started going. See, here's fine. the deal, though. You now, just remember the lyrics. Now if Casey comes back and says, you guys are assholes and I'm suing you, you'd be like, dude, it was a parody. We fucked it up four times <laughs> to, to make sure it was different. It was a parody, <laughs> and we don't get any kind of monetary gain from this. In fact, if anything, he's going to get monetary gain because our listeners are going to know who he is. Yeah, it's all true. 30 of them. Dude, whatever. We have more than 30 now. There's no way that 30 people listen to the podcast double to like triple the amount. I know that. They listen like once and they're done. Maybe 40. Okay. (laughs) So Valentine's Day, huh? What do you think about Valentine's Day? Dude, I don't know. There's a multitude of things that I was like interested in discussing like we were, Mike and I were talking we we're like dude we should discuss porn we should discuss the differences between sex and love we should talk about porn <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna that one came up several times we're gonna One-track do, we're gonna do, it, all. We're gonna do it all we're gonna hit every topic thought about doing uh, some Saint Valentine just talking about the, the, the man himself the legend that's what I was thinking yeah he died yeah he did a long long time ago story over <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> show over he uh, <laughs> hope you enjoyed it he was a saint <laughs> peace out he, this is my research. He was a saint. Oh, here we go. I'm and he, a, I'm a and someone checking. killed him. He died. He mm-hmm, was murdered. Mm-hmm. Good research there, bro. <laughs> you know what? That's uh, you are exactly right. I mean, you left out you left out a ton of details. You, but you, you pretty got much it. left out his life. Yeah. But you got it exactly. You got but it exactly I did get his right. death. I did get his death. And you know, maybe that's the most important thing. He was killed. Very he good. He was killed. Well, what I got on that was... Um, back in uh, whenever the fucking times it was where he lived, uh, Valentine... Yes, it was. 
This is the third century. I just don't know the exact date. So we're just going to the generic <laughs> third century. In Rome, the priest Valentine, uh, basically Emperor Claudius II, decided that single men made better soldiers than those of ones with wives and families. So he outlawed the marriage for young men. And uh, Valentine was like, no, you know, fuck this, dude. I don't believe in this. I believe in love. Because the Lord loves love. So he decided that he would go behind the fucking emperor's back and marry people and stuff anyway. Of course, it uh, kind of pissed old Claudius off, so then Claudius had him killed. <laughs> but then, yeah. he, but he was made a martyr because of it, because he went against him and still did you know, God's work. God's is, work. Yes. So there you go, man. So you're huh. right on. Thanks, Boggs. So Thanks I guess that. if we just had, if we had said that Christianity wasn't around for that to happen, then you would just have like young men fucking young girls. <laughs> And then they would go off to war, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and everybody would have won. Everybody would have won. <laughs> <laughs> everybody wins. Winner. Yay. I mean, somebody still dies because they're on the battlefield. But other than that, I mean. Yeah, don't worry about that. Who cares? That's a fun time Valentine nugget right there, don't you think? I do like that little nugget. It's, it's a fun good time. nugget. I got a little bit more. I don't know if Eric wants to go ahead and give some of his insight. We kind of mix in. Because this is going to be mix match, man. We're just going to fucking throw shit no, out no, no. there. We're it's doing your stuff, and then oh. we're going to do another song, and then we're going to do my stuff. Oh, son of a bitch. And that then we're going to do That sounds like organized nothing. chaos to me. That's what the show is, man. It is that. And then we're going to finish off with the extreme song. No, we're not. Yes, we are. God damn. I don't fucking care. We're doing it. You know it. what? Then you play the fucking guitar. I don't know this song. I didn't <laughs> learn it. And me either. <laughs> That's true. That's very true. Yeah, I do but have, that's why I do it'd have, be great. Yeah, yeah I have music totally, over there. Totally fuck it up. I told you guys it's going to be a travesty. <laughs> so anyways, it's fine. talking to Eric, we always like doing these shows when we do them because we get to point out how every fucking holiday was a pagan holiday that the Christians stole <laughs> and took for their own, which is great. Yep. I mean, and Valentine's no different. Um, basically what the... What the? Uh, I swear to what, fucking God, I will. Basically, or, what the, I'll swear to no God that I will punch your fucking throat. <laughs> you heard it, folks. He's gonna swear to God. I swear Eric's to no God. No God. You can't change it, dude. You already said it now. So anyway, we can edit things. But anyway, go on. What happened was uh, Valentine's Day, of course, pagan ritual, and the Christians decided what they would do is they would take it for their own and turn this Valentine's feast in the middle of February that the uh, the Romans used to have called, and this is a name that I, I'll butcher like I butcher all names, uh, Lupercalia. Don't ask me if that's how it's said. That's how I'm saying it. What it was, was it was just a, uh, basically it was, it was a romance kind of thing, you know, a lover's kind of little fucking thing that they had. They get together and have the big feast and the thing. It's like every goddamn holiday the pagans had. They just want to get together, get drunk and eat a bunch of food and screw each other. Love the pagans. Pagans are great, by the way. What else do you want to do at a party? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, so the Christians said, no, you know, we're, we, don't, we don't really buy into this shit. And uh, they dream, deemed it unchristian, of course. And then by the end of the 5th century, of course, pagans always keep doing the things, even after it's, you know, against the law. Now, in the in that century, by the way, just, just so everybody knows, when they say it's unchristian, it would be kind of like unconstitutional now. So. Oh, yeah. Because we know the Word of God is all... Um, so what happened was then by the end of the fifth century, Pope Galalysius, and that is a really fucked up way to pronounce that, I guarantee it, declared yeah, yes. in, that February 14th would be St. Valentine's Day. And then, uh, basically, so they took it over and they made it, uh, a time when it began the, like, you know, it was the time of the year when the birds began to mate and all this other stuff is so romantic, but they just took the pagan ritual, kind of took the, the drunken sex part out of it. And then turn into more of a uh, a Lord loving and everybody loves each other kind of day and stuff. You know, I'm starting to think that if Christians didn't do this type of stuff, Disney wouldn't do the things that they did. Disney's fucking awesome, dude. I mean, they're only going to take Star Wars and completely fucking ruin it now. Bastards. We're getting off topic. I don't know about all that, but... Oh, they're going to fucking butcher it. Fuck them. Oh, yeah, because George Lucas didn't do that. <sighs> yeah, he raped that with the first three. I'm not going to lie. You better lay off of Lucas, all right? The dude, you know, dude. Okay, he brought I'm gonna, us the I'm gonna make a shout theory. out, and then we'll get back on topic. But go to YouTube a Star Wars Phantom Menace review for the first one, and go, and it should be Red Letter Media. That's the company that did this. Go watch it, and then we'll, and then we'll talk. Continue. You son of a bitch. <laughs> 
But I mean, that's basically it. There's really nothing to it. I couldn't find a whole lot of info on the actual things about that's the actually, rituals. This is stuff. a nugget type story. It's not a really long, drawn yeah. out thing. It's not. There's not a lot to it. But then I just got some little fun facts about Valentine's Day here. That uh, besides the United States, the Valentine's Day is celebrated in Canada, Mexico, the United Kingdom, France, Australia, and Great Britain. Those I want you to countries. look up a stat and report next week about this too. Are abortion uh, procedures done very frequently in March? <laughs> March? Late February and March. That's true. I guess it, that would be right. We'll have to do that. Well, we're going to research that. take place. Oh, Jesus Christ. Is that great. wrong? That was wrong, wasn't it? It was wrong. It was. You're probably going to hell for that. Yeah. So anyway, by, uh, this started really took off in popularity around the 17th century. And then it says, you know, it's common for lovers and just all social classes exchange small tokens of affection and handwritten notes and blah, blah, blah. Then by the 1900s, of course, the United States took over like we always do every fucking other holiday and commercialize it. And that's when we came up with the greeting cards and everything. Hallmark. Yeah, Hallmark. Uh, greeting Card Association estimates that over a billion Valentine's Day cards are sent out each year. The only holiday that sends out more bullshit cards that nobody cares about and looks at and throws in the trash is Christmas. So. Wow, not Mother's Day? Yeah. Damn. And you know what? That, I didn't think about that when I read that. But yeah, you'd think maybe Mother's <clears> Day would be tops. But nope. Christmas has over 2.6 billion and over a billion got for Valentine's. So I guess people don't give a shit about their moms. You fucking bastards. bastards. God damn you. All right. What are we doing now is uh, we're going to hear some Eric's more genius. Eric's thingy. Yeah. You're doing mine? Damn it. <laughs> All right. Well, no, I said the same thing here in a second. Here's uh, the reason why we're doing this because mine is going to be the worst. <laughs> I'm just okay. No, I think the extreme song is going to be the worst. No, that's going to be a Travis. No, 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 no. That's going to be the fucking best. That's why that's the grand finale. <laughs> the my song is just going to be. Are, it's going to be. Flattered, you think I'm that good? It's just going to be flat monotone saying per usual. So you know, you guys can suffer through it for about a minute and a half. Uh, extreme, going to pull it out of the fucking ditch. <laughs> you just watch. <laughs> Don't Boxes look at me like it, uh, Tabs out here. Dude, you're setting up your audience to be a fucking buffalo going off the edge of a goddamn cliff. <laughs> no, right? right. Yeah. Without how we're being built up here. No, they're gonna they're gonna love it. I have a feeling it'll go okay. viral. We need to videotape uh, and put on YouTube. It's okay. Keep going. Is this the wrong song or what? <laughs> <laughs> you just, you just keep on going. So it's fucking me up. Are we starting after this one? It, it doesn't calm down at all? <laughs> I calmed down like four times. Are you going to do the dun dun? Is that better? <laughs> yes. God damn. <laughs> uh, obviously, this is very well rehearsed. I'm going to get tired eventually. Right, just, no, no, just start over. Start over. But it's all the same thing. <laughs> I know. Stranger to love. Gotcha, you bitch. know the rules, and so do I. A full commitment's what I'm thinking of. You wouldn't get this from any other guy. I just want to tell you how I'm feeling. Gotta make you understand. Never gonna give you up. Never gonna let you down. Never gonna run. But you're too shy to say it That's how we both know what's been going on We know the game and we're gonna play it 
And if you ask me how I'm feeling, don't tell me you're too blind to see. Never gonna give you up, never gonna let you down, never gonna run around and desert you, never gonna make you cry, never gonna say goodbye, never gonna tell a lie and hurt you, never gonna give you up, never gonna let you down, never gonna run around and desert you, never gonna make you cry, never gonna say goodbye. We just uh they did get Rick rolled. Yeah, we did. <laughs> uh, uh yeah, so there's that. There's that. <clears throat> yeah. There I'm is horrible that. singing this song. Ugh. It's Off a really voice. that's actually a pretty hard song to sing. Even though it is a parody. Um, <laughs> it's kinda high. It's kinda high. Uh, had to do it though. Had to do it. Okay. So now we have Eric's side too. Yay! Thanks, Rick. Vastly. After I just destroyed my voice. <laughs> So I'm going to go into the science of love. Um, Wonderful. There are pretty much three stages to uh, love. You have lust, attraction, and attachment. I'm going to get some porn music going. I have a pizza for you, ma'am. Did you order the sausage? Yes. I heard there were some pipes that needed to be cleaned. Um... So lust, which is obviously driven by testosterone and estrogen uh, by both in men and women, is the first stage. Everybody knows what lust feels like. Mm-hmm. Attraction is when it starts to get a little bit more complicated. Mm-hmm. Um, adrenaline uh, is in there. It activates a uh, stress response, increasing blood levels uh, and cholesterol. Um, it also has an effect uh, which can unexpectedly bump into your lo- what? Oh yeah, yeah. You can like bump uglies. <laughs> no, it it just creates little things like if you accidentally bump into your new loved one, uh, you start to sweat and your heart races and mouth goes dry. It's caused by adrenaline. And you get engorged. Uh, you also have dopamine, which gives you that love-struck feeling. Also, if you have a dopamine surge, it will cause hallucinations and schizophrenia. And so, will the song I'm gonna do later? Also, a uh, desire slash reward uh, triggered response that gives you a rush of pleasure. Um, and actually, it has the same effect on the brain as taking cocaine. Hmm. Um, you also have serotonin, uh, which helps kind of bring back and why like you can't get the memory of somebody out when you're away from them. Um, and it actually does change the way you think. There was a uh, study done in Italy uh, with people that had been madly in love for less than six months and they wanted to see how the brain mechanisms worked. Um, and they actually found that some people developed uh, obsessive compulsive disorders because of it. And a lot of people also uh, fell into depression. There were a lot, lots of different, but it actually changed like they were different people before they fell in love um and then you also have attachment which is the third stage attachment and you have uh, predominantly two uh chemicals that go off you have the oxytocin and vespressin is that that sperm i was gonna say Uh, vasopressin sorry i was was gonna say the the, mine would be semen and that would be the only one oxytocin (laughs) is a hormone uh, that is released by men and women during orgasm. I knew it. <laughs> yep. Um, and it uh, creates severe attachment to the significant other. Um, and then vasopressin is a... It's kind of like um, a chemical that comes off. It's released after sex. And it uh, helps a long-term commitment stage happen. It also works with your kidneys to control thirst. 
Hence why you don't get dry mouth when you're in love with somebody, like in a long-term relationship. <laughs> this is a really informational uh, segment here. Yeah. That's why I wanted to it go It is an it. informational segment. Well, I'm playing guitar at the same time. It's kind of hard. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it is kind of hard. And filled with zyprosacine. <laughs> Oxycontin, Oxy- what'd you say? <laughs> My penis has Oxycontin, Oxycontin in it, baby. I'm going to shoot yeah. it all up in you. What? Oxycontin. Oxycontin. I've got Oxycontin. Huh, this is kind of interesting. Uh, there was a study that was done that uh, they took uh, prairie voles that indulge in far more sex than uh, that is strictly necessary for the purpose of reproduction, just like humans do. Mm. And they also pair bonds. Uh, so what they did was they took male prairie voles and they gave them a drug that suppressed the vespressin or vasopressin and the bond with their partner deteriorated immediately as they lost all devotion and failed to protect their partner from new suitors. So that's a very key drug apparently to uh, having a healthy long-term relationship. You need to get some of that. Have you been married for a few years or you get my age? It'd probably come in fucking handy. So... Just a little uh, behind the scenes on what is actually going through your brain when you are falling in love with somebody. It's not necessarily a spiritual thing. <laughs> oh, hell no. <laughs> it is very much a natural thing that happens. There are very specific chemicals that get triggered at very specific times of a relationship, i.e. when you first meet them, or uh, if you've been with them for a little while and you smell them, that also can trigger... Uh, dopamine and other kinds of chemicals sex obviously triggers a whole lot that's why you had that euphoric stage all that good stuff so why i specifically say that it's not a spiritual thing is because a lot of cultures and civil and uh, civilizations thought it to be so and then they also addressed their culture as such so you have interesting little ways of going about courtship in certain societies. You also have mutilation going on. Um, Whether it's for beauty and it's reciprocal or it is uh, violence against people. But to them, that's just normal. They do have crazy things. Oh, I should have pointed this out. It was a fun little thing about that Valentine's thing, that ritual they used to do. Because I was just trying to get through it because I don't really care that much. But this is kind of funny thing about that. Talking about rituals. They used to do a thing during that period. Wouldn't it if I can say it was? Fifth century. Who gives a shit? But that, that <laughs> fucking Valentine's ritual. Uh, the men would get these blood-soaked fucking like uh, cloths with like goat's blood. And they would run around and fucking slap the women in the crops. Because they believed it would bring about fertility and shit. And also the way they finished off the festival. Uh, the women, I guess they would like put their names in this fucking urn. And then the guys would all draw a name out, and whoever they drew would be like their fucking woman for that year that fucking make babies <laughs> or do stuff with. Nice. I thought that was pretty fun. We should try that. So you have like that African tribe that puts the rings around the women's necks to make them longer because that's an attractive thing. Um, there was also a, uh, a bunch of grave sites found in Mexico Don't from uh, very elongated skulls. Don't try and deep throat those broads. Uh, kind of looks it. like a... Well, you just, looks look, like you a, just feel inferior. Yeah. The skulls that they found, it looks like a cross between a human and an alien. It's, it's really strange. But what they did is starting at one month, they would uh, strap a board to their forehead. And as the skull would grow, it wouldn't grow forward. It wouldn't burgeon. It would actually protrude on the top. And then as they got older, they would start putting rings around them to kind of make the shape of a cone. Um, unfortunately, this was a, a very risky thing. Imagine that. <laughs> uh, many of those that were disfigured uh, died young. And so they have these mass uh, grave sites with a whole bunch of very young skeletons. Um, but they were adorned with uh, all kinds of jewelry and cloth and stuff. So they were very well received people. Um, and they're starting to believe that maybe it was a, uh, a beauty thing. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't a, a thing that had to do with uh, wealth. It had to m- more do with uh, attractiveness. That's true, man. There's nothing I'd dig more than a chick with like an alien head. 
And then in China, you also have the wonderful practice known as foot binding, which uh, if anybody's ever seen a picture of uh, what a foot looks like after it's been binded, it's pretty, pretty bad. Um, and it's something that a lot of uh, feminist activists have been advocating against for a long time because it is it is just straight up violence. It started with uh, the rich in China doing it because... Uh, it was, let's see, the practice was possibly originated among upper class court dancers in the early Song Dynasty, uh, but eventually spread to the common lower classes, and it became popular because men thought it to be highly attractive. Uh, essentially what they do is they tape a woman's foot together, like the heel and the front of the foot with the toes. So when you actually look at like the x-ray of a woman who has her foot bound, it looks like almost like a high heel made out of mm -hmm. feet bone. Like it's it's really horrible what they do. And then like whenever you see one that's just, it's not the x-ray, it's the actual one. It looks like an elephant foot. Like they just really deform these women. It's nasty. And Eric made me look at it earlier. He forced it. Yeah, and they, they did it to uh, young girls because it prevents further growth. And for whatever reason in China, that's really attractive. Really short women. I don't know. Um, but you also have other rituals. There's tons of different stuff. You have uh, the ones that are even more sadistic that think that uh, the act of love is an evil thing. So they will sew a woman's vagina shut or they'll just cut her clitoris off so she doesn't have any kind of stimulation. Um all kinds of shit. I mean, it, that that's why I want to take it away from the spiritual thing. It's not to diminish love or say that it doesn't exist. That's actually acknowledging that it does exist and it does happen. And I am even a slave to it because I can't help it. It's just chemicals in my brain going off. What I do want to get away from is that it's a spiritual thing because that gives people the right to do these evil, horrible things to their children or to other people in their culture under the guise of it's a religious thing. I wish someone would put rings around my fucking penis when I was fucking growing up. Yeah, but I could use like a couple more inches. Says, you know what? Well, you see, we do that now. I mean, we. Uh, I mean, what the hell do you think circumcision is? Believe me, I'm yanking on all the time trying to yeah, make it exactly. bigger. Circum I'm cut. Circumcision. Um, it, it there's a lot of nerve endings that are in the foreskin, so it definitely dampens uh, some pleasure. Perfect. I've heard this. So if, if you don't have any foreskin, you're missing out. Oh, no, man. Because <laughs> most, most guys are, and I think most guys probably whack off way too much as it is. So if they had that and it, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, it enhanced it, oh, my God, dude, can you imagine? Never get your fucking hands off your own junk. <laughs> but and, and a lot of people don't view circumcision as mutilation, but it is. But it, in our society, it's normal. Just like in China, it's normal to do the foot binding. They don't view it as mutilation. Does that make it right? Absolutely fucking not. I don't even get either one. I mean, I know the circumcision is supposed to be for, you know, cleanliness and stuff to keep from infection and blah, 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 and all that other Yeah, we don't have that problem anymore, though. I was going to say. We don't get sand up in there. <sighs> well, I don't know. Well, it depends where you're I doing mean, in it. America, I guess you don't get sand up there. Well, I'm saying that mm. for the most part, industrial societies. Yeah, you're not really uh, around sand. Yeah. I get it. Well, <laughs> n not only that, but even if you are around sand, you are typically cleaner. You well, you shower. I mean, we actually have access to, like, clean water. That's what I'm <laughs> saying. <laughs> There's a lot damn. of things. There's a lot of things. I didn't want to spell it out. I wanted our listeners to kind of put two and two together. I think, some, I think the Seventh Amendment has something about this in it. Showering? <laughs> Just. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Eric, we love you. You know that, right? <laughs> the due process of showering and scrubbing your cock. <laughs> yeah. You have every right to scrub your cock with a clean, hot shower. Yes. Don't, don't use an SOS pad. I advise it. All right, are we are we gonna let Michael here destroy a song? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Here, I'm gonna go ahead and start this acapella. Do you kind of keep with me? Saying I love. Is that is that what we're doing next? Extreme. Oh wait, no. Wait, I forgot. That's the one we're finishing with. <laughs> oh, Boggs loves it. Audience members, I <coughs> fucking hate Michael right now. Everybody, <laughs> set on my penis. Whoa. That's not the song. I'm just letting We're you guys know. We're aware it's not the song. You ready? No, but let's do it. Hey. 
Every night I hope and pray A dream lover will come my way A girl to hold in my arms And know the magic of her charms Because I want a girl to call my own I want a dream lover So I don't have to dream alone Fuck us. Dream lover, where are you? Where the love oh so true and a hand that I can hold To feel you near as I grow old Because I want a girl to call my own I want a dream lover So I don't have to dream alone Someday, I don't know how I hope you'll hear my plea Keep going, son Some way, I don't know how She'll bring her love to me Dream lover Until then I'll go to sleep and dream again That's the only thing to do To all my lover's dreams come true Because I want Oh, I thought you were taking over My own Dream lover So I don't have to dream alone Suck it Suck it. I think I finished strong. I think I started real bad. I think I finished strong, though. <laughs> what did we say, dude? I think it was great. You're going to do the Because I Want part again? I won't take over this time. I just wanted to do it with you that one time. Because I want. Okay. All right, hold on. Hold on. Let's just do the whole thing, then. Just start from Dream Round Mother 2. Yeah. Start from, oh. start from the Dream Lover part. Which yeah, Dream Lover that. until then. Let's do it. Do countdown. Dream Lover until then. I'll go to sleep and dream again That's the only thing to do Till my lover's dreams come true Because I want a girl to call my own I want a dream lover so I don't have to dream alone I know Eric loves that There goes that song. Is that your new thing, crumpling up paper? In the it is this microphone? fucking. It is this fucking show. I can't do. So I'm gonna oh. fucking do. I'm gonna do fucking paper throw. Uh, that's it. I'm just gonna edit that shit out. I do want to say do this. It. I do want to say this. That was for a very special girl that I have uh, feelings so for. So anytime you hear me horns. getting really upset over nothing, it's because he was smacking his lips. I'm gonna put it this way. If you just tell me not. It out now. Fuck him. If you tell me not to do something, I'm gonna do it. Because I'm a fucking man and a rebel, and I do what I fucking want. Yeah, but nobody's going to hear it because I'm just going to edit it out. So That's okay. It's more work for him, so I don't give a shit. I'll just fucking do it every goddamn five seconds. He'll be why, are you, why are you looking at me when you say that? And I'll just cut you right out of the fucking show. Well, then this would be about a third of a show short of fucking entertainment. I'll tell you that right now. Hey, so what the fuck? Are we, uh, we can't finish yet. You want to do porn facts? I got fun porn facts. Then we finish off with the grand finale, or do we got some more gold? Uh, I, just want, facts. I just want to say this to all the listeners out there. This is uh, one of those shows where we feel like we've done so much good over the last few weeks. We put a lot of effort into these shows. Uh, I mean, except for Boggs last week. But other than that, we put so much into fuck? it. This is a fuck off show. We didn't put a lot into it because we wanted to be spontaneous and fun. And that's my excuse for it sucking. So get ready for it. Hey, are you ready for this? Good time porn facts. Fun, fun time porn facts. I only got a few. These are all great. You guys be sure to jump in if you got anything fun to say here. 26 million porn sites on the web. You realize that? Dang. 26 million. And I think I've seen most of them. <laughs> <laughs> so that's 12% of all porn si or sites <laughs> on the web are porn sites. Every second, and I guess this is worldwide, this is from what I'm looking at here, the porn industry makes over $3,000. How's that? So that's a lucrative business. So if this shit doesn't start working out for us pretty soon. <laughs> porn. Yeah, it's porn, porn for us. We can at least do the sounds and stuff for them because we have all the equipment to do so. Oh, and we're going to add those in eventually. We're going to have some of that shit. Um, 40 million Americans are regular visitors to porn sites. Wow, that's actually staggeringly low. 70% are men aged 18 to 24. I mean, I think that's, let's face it, that yeah. is pretty obvious, right? Only one in three are women, which... You know, you think it might be a little bit higher. The average, the porn business rakes in $2.8 billion a year in the United States. Worldwide, 4.9. So think about that, dude. 
over half of it's done in our country <laughs> of 300 million people. When you got 7 billion on the planet, God damn, we're a bunch of fucking sick bastards. No, no, we're a Christian nation. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> yes. So, um, 25% of all search engine requests are porn related. I like that. So there's 60 million a day requests for pornography on the internet. Uh, 35% of all internet downloads are pornographic. And uh, ama- amazing enough, like the top pornographic search is just uh, sex or adult dating. And, you know, I would have thought it would have been like, you know, chicks on horses or some shit like that. But that, you know, That's what your that, search bar is, I'm sure. That's what I'm looking at. Oh, so here's the thing. This is great. You know, we're talking about Christian fucking states and conservative states. The number yeah. one state for consumption of porn. Take a guess at it. Texas. You, you'd think. Um, I'm going to go with something really in the, like, the heart of Dixie. Go, I'm going to say... Mississippi. I was going to say, I think as conservative red state as you can. Alabama. You're not even close. Utah. The Mormons love fucking uh, porn, Damn, dude. I should have thought of that. Per thousand people on the internet in Utah, um, six of them are hitting a fucking porn site every. Dude, we we every kind of already knew hits. that. We should have probably known that anyway because that's we what I'm to, saying. Like we should have known that because <laughs> they were the ones who were like, "Hey, let's go to Vegas and get married so we can fuck," and then because they're so divorced. Yeah. But if you look at like when they vote, and Aubrey and stuff, loves porn. Yeah, because when they vote, like Utah is the most Republican state. She watches it on her phone right. and masturbates. That's that's great. Thirty-four percent of internet <laughs> users have experienced unwanted porn. I don't know what the fuck unwanted, unwanted porn is. Porn. <laughs> I, know I know what that is. I don't. It's like two old people. I know what that is. Or yeah. your mom and dad. Yeah. No, well, that would be terrible. No, it's it's okay. Let me give you a really good piece of advice. If you're going to like a like a tube site like YouTube or RedTube or whatever, mm. oh, yeah. don't just go to the search bar and type in the number because I know that they have everything numerical. So I was like, let's just play Russian roulette one day, and I typed in four seven six three. I don't know the fuck Russian I, roulette on red but tube. Biggest mistake ever. So I know what I'm on porn is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bad thing. But see, you were it's see- a real bad thing. But you were actually seeking it out, so you got what you deserve. Now this one was a little shocking to me. The average age at which a child first sees online porn, take a guess. Eight. Two. Two is ridiculous. Eight <laughs> <laughs> Eight actually is close. Eleven. I thought that was a little young. Because you know most people, like, they let their kids on, but they have blockers and shit on there. Right. So I'm thinking about my kid who's nine. I'm like, man, he's probably, I got to watch him. I got to pay more attention when he's on there. Um, 20% of men watch porn while they're at work. 13% of women do. Man, I don't pull that shit. The average porn site visit, and this made a lot of sense to me, six minutes and 29 seconds. <laughs> I was like, that's probably about right. That's awesome. That's probably about Eric, right. Eric. Eric can boast and laugh all he wants, but I think if you're at past 15 minutes, you're just wasting your goddamn time. Yeah, especially if you know you're you know, taking care of yourself there. I mean, fucking six minutes is plenty to play with your own fucking junk that you see constantly. Uh, least popular day of the year to view porn? Christmas Day. Thanksgiving, which makes sense to me because they're all at the fucking strip club, which I found out yeah. from this mm-hmm. past That's uh, a good point. or extravaganza. Uh, the highest day of the week. That uh, of viewing a porn Saturday, Sunday. So people go to church, um, they get their sins fucking, you know, what do they call it, absolved, and then they go home and they fucking watch a lot of porn. So that's what they do. Um, every 30 minutes in the United States, a pornographic video is created. And last but not least, I'd like this. Um, some, you know, a lot of mainstream companies, they have like offshoot companies and shit that are into CD stuff, like Disney's guy, yeah. I don't know, fucking Roger, whatever their thing is. And they do their, all their R graphic movies and shit under that title. The four top companies that ex- basically make profit off of pornographic content Yahoo, Comcast, AT&T, and Fox News Channel. <laughs> are you serious? I am serious. <laughs> you awesome. like, you like that? So that's fun facts about porn right there. I feel worse as a human being right now. now. We're all educated, and we had fun doing it. Now I'm going to be following a goddamn page. See, this is going to be hard. This is the hardest paper trail to follow because you're like watching this video, and it's a great video, and you're like, I want to know if this is a Fox News production. I'm not going to watch this anymore. I fuck it. I don't care. I did a little Just research on that because I was like, that can't be right. And I looked, and they it's one of those things. You know, Fox News is part of the big Vi- is it not Viacom? What's the Rupert Murdoch? I don't know, but his fucking whole media industry and stuff, and they've got a lot of porn stuff on the side. So it's it's Fox News, but it's really more just the whole 
you know, thing yeah. that Murdoch owns. But it's funner to say it, Fox News. <laughs> More fun. God damn. More funner. Get All it right. right. We destroying this? All right, so listen. Seriously, folks, this is going to be the largest travesty I've ever done musically. Yeah, we, we may not be able to get oh, through yeah. all of it, but hey, dude, if he, I'll try. <clears throat> if he if he goes out on us on the guitar, man, we're fucking acapelling this motherfucker. He's just doing it. Warn you. Hold up, let me get a drink real quick. I gotta wet the. <laughs> yeah, get ready for this. Are you kidding? I'm doing the hard part. What the hell are you talking about? Oh, I'll fucking do it with you, Eric. I'll do it with you real hard. <laughs> Saying I love you is not the words I want to hear from you. It's not that I want you not to say, but if you only knew how easy it would be. <laughs> you messed me up, Eric. How you more than words is all you have to do to make it real then you wouldn't have to say that you love me cause I already know what oh my God. would Shut up, keep you if my heart was torn into more than words to show you feel that your love for me is real what would you <laughs> say if i took those words away <laughs> then come on Get your breath, get your breath. Let's go, let's go. Here we go, we're doing, we're kicking ass. Then you Just by could... saying Fuck. I love you. la di da da <laughs> Isn't that what he does? It's real fucking gay right there. And I don't mean that in a homosexual way. He's got it, man. He's a professional. Now that I've tried to talk to you and make you understand, all that I have to do is close your eyes and just reach out your hands and touch me. Hold me close, don't ever let me go. More than words is all I ever need to you to show. Then you wouldn't have to. This is fucking, such a fucking travesty. Man, I was gonna say he butchers words and then you stop. You gotta just keep going, man. Okay, let's go. Okay, so let's go back to the part where it says more than words. Okay, just give us a quick <laughs> countdown. Just, just more than words. Are you doing it? Come on, man, do it with me. Is all I ever needed you to show. Fuck! I need some backup with me. <laughs> then you wouldn't have to say that, that you, you love me. Cause I already know What would you do If my heart was torn in two More than words to show you feel That your love for me is real What would you say Just by saying I love you. Oh, it's a pause. You. You gotta pause there. 
damn it, I don't know this whole fucking song. Dude, Obviously. Why do we not have this down perfectly yet? We we almost practiced this twice. Almost. What are you talking about, dude? That was great. Are you kidding me? I thought it was pretty solid, actually, except for the five or six <sighs> butch up lines and the three or four times where we missed our cues. Other than that, I thought it was pretty <laughs> fucking spectacular. Oh, God. Now I had to debate whether to cut that whole damn thing. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. You can't cut it. Oh, no. That's that's fucking gold. All right. Well, everybody have a happy Valentine's Day and get out there and do great things for the world and be less religious. Don't you play now. We're going out with our fucking theme song. So I see you about to stroke your guitar. You get your hands off that neck, boy. Um, yeah, you guys have a great time. Go out. Um, buy your bitch, uh, your lady some flowers. Sorry. Have lots of sex. Have lots of sex. Wear fucking rubbers if you don't know the girl. We'll do some or abortion boy. stats like Or boy. Time. Yeah. Or train the best night. Whatever you learn to, man. Have a good time with it. All right, I love you. I'm Eric. I'm Michael. I'm Bonds. And remember, folks, you're all a bunch of fucking idiots.